You're in a good place now. You are listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. Tonight, I'm addressing the concept of vigilance, why we need to be vigilant and when we need to be vigilant. You know, oftentimes I see us turning our back to situations that we really need to focus on. Recently and throughout the news the last few years, there's been several crises that have happened. We've watched as innocent people have died, and we wonder, is there anything we could have done? And I know that oftentimes we feel sad, down, depressed, angry, upset, upset that this could happen, sad and disillusioned. And through this process, we slowly rebuild ourselves and begin to feel better. But what I found is what can we do, whether it's a crisis, whether it's an attack, or whether it's personally in our own life to some degree, what is it that we need to be employing to offset or stop some of these things from happening, but how can we actually feel more powerful, understand our power, and wield our power for a positive response. And I want to talk about vigilance tonight because, you know, I think oftentimes people see vigilance as some sort of bad thing, you know, like we're starting our own uh, our own military in Texas. You know, we all talk about that, uh, that group down in South Texas that tried to start their own, uh, you know, their own kind of a state. <laughs> but vigilance to me is the action or the state of keeping careful watch for possible danger or difficulties. And I think with that in mind, being in a state of awareness, knowing your surroundings, taking a personal interest in the people that you surround yourself with is a really good start. You know, when we are aware and when we're on point, and you know when you're on point because you feel it. We are better at understanding the situations and the circumstances that's happening around us and what we need to or what needs to be done. We see it in the news. We hear of violent acts, even terrorist attacks by people who, after they interview those closest to them, speak out about how they were either violent, had a past and a history of violence or crime, They're mad, they're angry, they're mean people, and talking about how they were going to hurt people and talking about killing other people. And quite honestly, I feel that oftentimes we can stop these big things from happening if we become more vigilant, if we become more aware. Recently in the news, there was another situation that was taking place, um, and there were some people that called the police on some suspicious behavior, and thwarted a situation, stopped a situation that was going to happen that could have been just as bad as what happened in Orlando, and it, or even worse. And, you know, it's interesting. It's like, you know, we think about it in these big terms of, you know, these, the, these crimes against humanity, and it, it's deplorable, and it's got to stop, and I agree with you. But I think it's a microcosm of our own life. And what I mean by that is that I think oftentimes – We feel out of control in our own life for whatever reason. And we'll talk about that throughout the hour tonight because I think this is very important to grasp and it's important concepts to understand because I think that directly relates to why we feel so angry and so overwhelmingly depressed and sad when things like this happen in the news. Because there's a direct correlation between these types of things And how we personally feel out of control in our own life. And I think we have to begin with our personal power. Our personal power. And I know it's it's really interesting. I don't know about you, but I want to bring up something real quick that has always kind of shocked me. You know, the way that we see or interpret certain language and certain words in our life, we interpret them as some sort of nasty thing, as some sort of a awful bad thing and and what i want to explain is you know some of us actually think money is bad 
And I think that it, it, the root of it, what, money is the root of all evil. And I would have to disagree with that. I think it's the way that money is used and the way that people see money. I think money can do really good things. It can help people. Uh, I was recently at an organization um, in, in in Texas. It's called Vogel Alcove, and they help children who are homeless. Okay, and they do some amazing things to educate these children and to help them give them a safe place. Because think about it: if you're if you're a homeless child and your parents or your mom, most of them are, are single moms that are raising children, and you're going from facility to facility, uh, you know, place to place, trying to sleep for a night or, or sleeping on someone's couch, that child is going through a lot of stress. And, and why I'm pointing this out is that money from donors can help these children offset the stress and the anger that they're feeling and be able to have a safe place because, you know, our society is only as strong as our weakest link. Okay? Okay. Our society is only as strong as its weakest link. And oftentimes we try to sweep that under the rug, you know. Oh, well, those people, they must have done something because they're poor. Or there's something wrong or even not even wanting to deal with the fact that there are homeless children. I mean, it's it's sad. I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, yeah, it's all roses and everybody's good to go. It's sad. But there's somebody doing something about it. Vogel Alco, very, very great organization that I'm going to be uh, getting involved in. I'm going to be sharing some stuff on the show about them, and I think you're really going to be interested. But let's go back to what I was really talking about. Okay, money is the root of all evil. I disagree. It's the same as people perceive the word power. Okay? Power. People see power as like power hungry and, and mean and out of control, but I see power as intelligence. I see power and personal power as you realizing who you truly are, understanding the power you have, and not succumbing to situations based on what is normal or what is cool or what is accepted, but accepting the fact that you're way bigger than this body, right? Because there's a spirit component there, right? Okay, so you're kind of renting this body. So let's look at our personal power because I think this directly relates to vigilance. Because when we realize our own personal power in life, we're able to be we're able to have that connection where we stand up for what we believe in. We stand up for ourselves and we stand up for others and our beliefs. And, and the interesting part about this is that when we understand our personal power, I believe that it's predicated by understanding unconditional love. I believe that it's predicated by understanding gratitude. And, and what I want to bring up about that, too, is that a lot of times people think about love, right? They think about love as sex or romance or whatever, but I'm not, that's not what I'm talking about. See, it's like the words we use are kind of already disconnected from the feelings we have, right? Because we automatically assume certain definitions of things that maybe apply, but it's not what I'm talking about. You know, it's interesting because when we think about personal power, a lot of times people think about power hungry. But I want to change that definition and think about superhero, okay? When I think about personal power, I think about superheroes, And you know how much we have a fascination for superheroes. My God. I mean, there's a superhero movie coming out like every two days, right? And (laughs) I know that's an exaggeration, but it's still pretty true. And you know what? Who doesn't like a superhero? I love superheroes. You know, the reason why I would have to say, I would have to suggest that the reason why we actually love superheroes is because internally we are all superheroes. I think we love those films because we can connect at the soul level because that's who we truly are. Okay, I think all of us have this personal power to be a superhero. And I'm, I don't know about bending steel and um, flying around. Maybe we can. Maybe we can. But I'm talking about the ability to rise above. The ability to be aware. And the ability to live true to our values. And I guess that begins with figuring out what our values are. And when I return, we're going to be talking about defining that, how our values 
directly relate to being vigilant because that's the key. We got to figure out how that is joined together and how to make your life simpler, but at the same time being aware, being on top of things and being the great connector. Because I think all of us can be the great connector in one way or another. We're just not tapping in to our power. AshleyBurgess.com. Wow, that website looks amazing. Check it out. Got a lot of cool videos on there. Lots of new videos, lots of new content. The content is just popping hot on AshleyBurgess.com. Live your true life perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. will be back this time. And well, oh gosh, I don't know. What do you think? Be back this time in two shakes. And jump in the deep end on perspectives. Now, here's Ashley. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. Tonight, I've been talking about vigilance, about being aware of our surroundings, about not just allowing things to happen to us, but realizing that we're not a victim anymore. We actually have some power. And recently in the news, we've seen some awful things. But some of these things have been thwarted and didn't come to fruition because somebody took the initiative, saw something that they didn't think was right, and made a call. Tonight, I'm asking you to make the call. I'm asking you to make the call on something that you don't see is right. I'm asking you to make the call when you don't feel comfortable. I'm asking you to make the call in your own life. It's time. The phone is ringing. It wants you to pick up. It's ready for you to take on your own personal power. Right before the break, I was talking about superheroes and how we love superheroes. I love superheroes. You love superheroes. And the reason why we love superheroes so much and the reason why these films do so well in the box office is because, you know what? They remind us of something within us. You know, they remind us of something within us. And that's why we cheer so much when the good guy wins. That's when we cheer so much when the superhero saves the day. Because we, too, can save the day. And and I often find that when bad things happen in our world, instead of saying, I'm going to be more powerful and I'm going to believe and I'm going to be more vigilant, doggone it, instead of that, we sit there and go, oh, God. Oh, God, here we go again. We got another awful thing that happened. And I agree, it's painful and it's, and it makes us angry and it makes us sad for the people that have passed. And it makes us sad for their families. And why does this have to happen? Why does violence have to happen? But what I ask you to do at this point in time is to realize there's a time for mourning and there's a time to turn the TV off and to find that power within. And, you know, I wish I could go around every state in the country and pass legislation that says that we are not going to watch CNN when we are eating any type of food at a restaurant and we're not going to watch CNN when we're at a bar. Because, you know what, there's got to be some downtime, okay? And you've got to make that downtime for yourself because this world, these people, these industries, these media outlets make money off of you. Okay, And until you decide that I have power, I don't have to be a victim. Because as I watch these shows, and I've talked about this before, I have a heart too, and I feel, and I have lots of gratitude, and I have unconditional love, and I can feel for these people. And I care, and I say a prayer. But at one point or another, I'm tired of watching the same two shots on the same show over and over again, feeling like a victim. So tonight's show is dedicated to everybody that believes that they have more power than they are exerting. And even for some of you that say, I don't have power, come on. It's easy to say that because when we say we don't have power, what does that directly mean? I'm not responsible. Okay? If I say I don't have power, then I'm not responsible for anything that happens that doesn't work out. And I'm saying tonight... I know that responsibility takes work and I understand that it takes time and I understand that it takes you jumping in 100%. But isn't it time to take responsibility? 
haven't we kind of waited long enough on the sidelines? I find that life is a lot more refreshing and rewarding since I've stepped up to the plate. Yes, there was a time in my life that I didn't want to take responsibility for my actions either. And there was a time when I didn't think I had any ability. So what happened is basically I thought that I didn't have the ability or the power in my own life, and so I let things happen to me. I felt like the victim, and I got overwhelmed, and I felt upset, and I got angry, and I got sad, and then I couldn't get out of bed. You see how this goes. And then I would get glimpses of the power I had, and then I realized that it was either comfortable to be uncomfortable with not standing up and being responsible, and I realized that once I did stand up, it was like I took an oath. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, now I'm in control of my own life. Holy crap, what now? And I remember I got a little, like, buyer's remorse. Yeah, I know. (laughs) I'm just breaking it down the authentic way on hashtag L-O-I-T-L perspectives because I do not sugarcoat it. I'm not going to lie to you. I'll tell you exactly how it is because when you know how it is and I tell you and you go through it, you go, holy crap, she was right. So yeah, so I had buyer's remorse because I went, okay, I'm responsible. I got personal power. I'm no longer going to be a victim anymore. And then I was like, oh crap, this takes time. This takes work. I got to actually do this 24-7. But it got easier. And it didn't really get any easier. You know what it got? It just, it, it was routine, but it was mandatory. And really, honestly, it's mandatory for everybody in everybody's life. It's just, when are you ready to step up to the plate? Step up and stand up for yourself. And when we stand up for ourselves, isn't it interesting how we can stand up for others too? Isn't that interesting how once we start standing up for ourselves, all of a sudden we help the voice of others too and we want to be there, we want to champion them? You know why? Because we respect our voice and we respect the power we have and so we want to build other people up. It's interesting how we begin to stand up for our beliefs. And and better yet, this brings me to the point of what we were talking about back, back in the first segment. What are our values? Right? Because I think that in order to be vigilant, to be aware, to be cognitive, to, to, to go out there and to have this power and to, to use your power in a, in a good, positive way, that vigilance has got to line up to your values. What do you value? And I'll just start talking about some of the things I value because I think it might help you to kind of kind of get the, the thoughts flowing because sometimes, you know, you're like, what the heck is he talking about? So think about this, values. My values are very interesting, and it's taken me a long time. It's taken me so far my whole lifetime to craft and to mix and match and to change and to configure my values so that I'm not living antithetical to my values, but I'm living to strengthen my values. And one of the things that I've realized in life is that in order to strengthen my values and to live true to my values, I have to be vigilant about it. I can't feel one way about freedom and say that freedom is one of the main values in my life and I believe that democracy is an amazing thing and I believe that everybody should have the right to freedom. I can't value that if I walk down the street and I see somebody beating somebody up because of who they are, because they don't like them or because they don't think that they should have freedom. If I don't say something... Or call the authorities. or I mean, I'm not saying that you need to get in a situation where you could get beaten up or killed. But I'm saying there's certain things that we can all do, okay, to shine light on inequality. And that, and freedom itself wouldn't be a real value if I saw something like that taking place and I turned around and walked away. I took the blind eye to it. Because it wasn't convenient. Or I was scared. Or I didn't want to be judged. Or I didn't want that person to not like me. Do you see what I'm saying? Because once we realize our values, we're able to be vigilant 
about that, to preserve our values. And and no values, let me define values real quick, because sometimes people say, well, what if you're a crazy maniac and those are your values? I don't think that values, when defined in the realm of my definition, are ever negative. They can't be. Values are inherent. The word values <laughs> and the inherent meaning of value is something that is of value, okay? That is real. That is good. Okay, so that's what we're talking about is having good, decent values. For example, if one of the biggest values you have is the family and the respect of a marriage and you respect marriage, the last thing you're going to do is step out on your marriage. You're going to deal with the problems in your marriage confront it or whatever it is before you step out on your marriage if those are your true values you're going to be vigilant about that you're going to step up to the plate and say well no uh, i can't i can't i can't do this and you know whatever but i i've got to focus on what i have here because that's a value i have now whether or not the marriage is going to last i don't know but you're going to work at it if it's a true value of yours and i ask you to begin to look at your values tonight because sometimes And oftentimes, we live antithetical to our values because we're taught something and we allow what we're taught, we allow the environment that we are raised in to kind of create what we feel. And it's time for you as an adult to take your own power, okay, that's what we're talking about, right, power, and create your own value system so that you know exactly where you stand and what values mean to you and what values you're going to be vigilant about. Check me out on Facebook. Woohoo! Facebook! Ashley Burgess. Also, Perspectives with Ashley Burgess has a large community. We have about 72,000 and change. Love to have your involvement. Stay tuned because Live Your True Life Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. We'll be back this time and well, two shakes. Jake Busey, and you're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. Tonight we've been talking about vigilance, about how to be vigilant in your own life, and how we have to have these values in our life that we can be vigilant about. You know, we've been talking about personal power, and how we all have this personal superhero power that we were all born to be. And it's time that we take that power and use it. And I think that oftentimes the reason why we feel like a victim when we do, when we feel like a victim sometimes when we do is because it's like we're not using what we have. We're not using our strength. You know you know when you see somebody that's doing something in your field of work And they're not maybe, and I'm not judging, but they're not doing it maybe as well as you could do it. And you kind of feel bad because you didn't really put yourself out there to try to even get that job or do that. And so you kind of feel weird about it. You see what I'm saying? It's hard to explain it, but when you actually have the power within, it's like you kind of feel slighted. But yet you really don't know where that's coming from, so you just kind of get angry. You know, it's like all that pent-up energy when you don't work out for a long time, and so... Instead of really working out, you keep telling yourself you don't need to work out, you don't get to the gym, you don't go exercise, and then you just kind of get angry inside, and anybody that says anything, you just kind of just like go off on them. It's like you lose it on them, because you know what? You got all that pent-up energy. And so I'm saying to you tonight, it's time to use that energy, which is really your power that you've been suppressing for a long time, to be vigilant. Not only in the outside community and on in our world, and I call our world an amazing playground, it's time. And I want to talk about elementary school real quick. <laughs> I know, why is it that me, why is it that Ashley Burgess can always take a show and bring it back to middle school? Because that's where it all started. Because, quite frankly, that's where everything began. Okay, so let's visualize this. Picture this. It's recess. You finally get out of that math class that's been boring the living crap out of you. Okay, that's a personal comment. (laughs) 
You finally get out of that class, and everybody runs out the door, or you have one of those teachers. Everybody get a single file line. Okay, we got 30 minutes for 45 minutes out here on the recess. Da da da. When we come back in, we'll be working on fractions. Oh, God. Anyway. Okay. So, we go out there, and we're all playing around. Everybody's having a great time, and you got some people playing hide-and-go-seek, and you got some people on the swing set and running around, and you got people playing ball, maybe some guys or maybe even some girls playing catch. You got some people that are just kind of running, and you got some people that are just kind of hanging out talking, right? And everything's going good for a little while until... Until one person's got to ruin it for everybody, right? Y'all remember that one person? I bet some of you are already thinking about that person. And it's funny how that is because it's like it's always something random. Like like Johnny throws a dodgeball at Mary Kate and hits her in the face like real bad. And recess is abruptly ended. And all of us have to walk in single file and sit at our desk. And normally, remember, the teacher would turn off the lights. (laughs) And you couldn't speak to anyone. And some of us would try to talk because that's just the way we are. I mean, I'm I'm kind of a talker from way back, obviously. And it's funny how it was that one person's problem. But what happened? And you got it. It became everyone's problem. Everyone had to suffer for that one person. And you know, I find that our world is in a similar place too, that the majority of people are very good, they're caring people, and they wouldn't hurt a fly. You know, but there is a small percentage that if allowed will ruin it for everyone. What do we do about that bully on the playground? What do we do about the violence in our streets? And I think that that becomes vigilance. We must take preemptive strikes to offset damaging violence. And I'm not saying that y'all need to be psychic and you need to know what's going to happen before it happens. And you're going to be one of those psychics that go down to the police station and, you know, draw out pictures of who you think is the, uh, the criminal. But there's definitely another way, right? Vigilance is that other way. We can be sure that our playground, a.k.a. our world is safe and not at risk. And I think that before we decide how to be more vigilant, we got to decide what vigilance means. And that's what I've been talking tonight is about being in a state of action and in a state of keeping careful watch. And I think that means awareness and knowing your surroundings and taking personal interest in the people around you. And, And that makes us more aware. And so think about it. Not only on a public platform do we need to have vigilance but on a personal platform so this isn't just about the news this isn't just about recent events this is an entire lifestyle choice we choose to have power on every level and power is not bad right when power is used properly It is not bad. Just like when money is used properly, it is good. And that's what we need to look at this flow and we need to figure out. And once we figure out this vigilance, we're able to stand up for ourselves, stand up for others, stand up for our beliefs, make the call. The one thing that I found, though, that gets in the way of us being vigilant is something that all of us have to deal with. And that is our mind. And what I mean by that is that our mind has a tendency of rationalizing things that have no rationale. For example, when something is not rational, we look at it and we kind of, at first it stands out, but then we try to make stories for why it's okay. Oh, I don't need to call the cops on that guy. I mean... Yeah, he was on a, in a car with a, a paper plate that was falling off. Um, I saw a gun kind of sticking out the window, and um, he looked like he had crazy eyes, and he looked like he had hit something on both sides of the car and was swerving in and out of lanes at 80 miles an hour in a 40-mile speed zone. Yeah, that's normal. But how often have you seen something similar that you didn't call the police? 
How often? And you know what? It's not about that person's not ever going to know. And I'm not saying that you should go around independently calling people, calling the police on people. But seriously, wouldn't you feel better if you made sure that everything was okay? It was a few months ago and I was driving. This is a good example. I was driving down the street. It was about 5 or 6 p.m. on a Saturday afternoon. And my husband and I were in the car together, and he's in the passenger seat because I'm a, I'm a driver. I'm a winner. Things are going to change. I can feel it. I'm a big-time driver. I like to drive, okay? I like to drive no matter if we're driving 24 hours straight. I will be the one that drives because I like to drive. Now, sometimes he occasionally is able to drive because he gets the rental car in only his name and refuses to add me as a qualified driver. Yeah, that's a definite power play, and I don't know if that power play is for the good or for the evil. Anyway... I'm driving down the road, and I see in my rearview mirror this car, like, swerving in and out of lanes, and all of a sudden they swerve into my lane and get right on my butt. And there's really nowhere for me to go. It's pretty packed. We're on a, you know, just a regular street, not a highway, and there's a light ahead. And this person's, like, literally, like, swerving inside the lane, like back and forth and, and really on my butt. And then swerves to the right lane. And anyway, so we get to the light and they're next to me uh, in the other lane. And I'm looking at them and this girl is literally so drunk she can barely hold her head up. There's another girl in the car and they're driving. They looked really bad. I don't know if they were drunk or it could have been drugs and drunk. But I I mean, that it's the kind of look that you see right before somebody passes out on the floor at their house. It was pretty bad. And I looked at them, I said, what is wrong with you? You know, and I said, roll down the window. And, and they, she looked at me, she could barely speak. And I said, you're, you're, you know, you're going to need to pull over. And, and at first I thought, you know what, they're probably just going somewhere up the street. But then I realized, you need to pull over. And I didn't, I didn't call like the police on them. And maybe I should have, because I kind of looked back at that. And if somebody would have gotten killed, man, that'd be bad. But I pulled over, and I, I made them lock their car up, and I had them take an Uber home. And I had somebody argue with me and said, you know what, you should have had, you should have called the police. And maybe that's true, because you know what, if they would have killed somebody, that would be pretty bad. And so I'm saying that sometimes, you know, like some of us would just be like, oh, look, they look like they've been having fun. They're probably heading home right now. You make up the story. They're probably heading home. They're probably getting off the street right now. It's no big deal. They'll be fine. We all make up that story in our mind, and we let them drive down the road. And the next thing you know, they kill someone. Do you see what I'm saying? In our mind is a very interesting thing. And some good examples that I find often some of us have dealt with, or you know somebody that's dealt with this, or you've personally dealt with it yourself, is that we do, we discredit things when we try to rationalize them in our own mind. You know, we see something that's not normal and we try to make it okay. It's that type of rationalization that happens in marriages oftentimes when one spouse thinks the other is cheating and maybe she or, see, she or he sees evidence but refuses to believe by discrediting the evidence as nothing. A similar situation is when a parent is told that their kids are on drugs. At first, most of the time, the parent begins to watch their child differently. But because deep down they don't want their kid to be on drugs, they discredit any type of drug mannerisms as nothing. Just the kids being a kid. And it's not until the evidence is right in front of their face... But even then, if their kid tells them that it's not theirs or they're not on drugs, they're going to believe it because they just choose to discount it. And so one of the things that we have to override to be vigilant is to not allow our minds to build a story against being powerful. Because when we do that, we take ourselves right out of the process of living and we go back into this place of being a victim. And we begin to see the world as a scary place. Because we've made up all these stories to protect us. But in the end, the stories cannot protect us. 
because they're not valid. We can't believe lies and assume that the lies are going to protect us because they won't. The lies just make life tougher to live. The lies get in the way of our lifestyle. Our, those lies are permeated within our society. And it's not until we let go of that and see things in a certain vigilant value way that we're able to overcome this and be the superhero that we're supposed to be. Stay tuned. When I return, I'll be talking about vigilance and about the six quick things that you can implement in your life today to change it up, to take the call, and to be that superhero that you were born to be. Check out the Ashley Burgess Network. Check out the iHeart Station. We got our new iHeart Station. Go to Live Your True Life Perspectives. Listen to Live Your True Life Perspectives on Spreaker, Stitcher, Google Play. Also, Identity and Identify Radio in Britain. Yes, we are now syndicated worldwide. Stay tuned because Live Your True Life Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back this time. And, well, you know, maybe uh, two shakes. You could be my luck. Get in here. You're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives. And I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. Right now, I want to talk about how you can be more powerful and vigilant. We've been talking about vigilance. We've been talking about powering up. And now I want to give you the six quick tips to how you can become more powerful and vigilant and live true to your values in your day-to-day, minute-to-minute, second-to-second life and be happy about it. Be successful with it. Be a role model. When you're a role model for others, wow, it's a big deal. And yes, it's a responsibility, sure. Sure, it's a responsibility, but you know what's so cool about that responsibility? It's got rewards too. Not only outside rewards and accolades from others, but you can help other people by just your example. And you get this internal love and passion for yourself because you feel good about it. Because why? You're doing the right thing. When we do the right thing, life becomes easier. When we tell the truth, it's the same as when we tell the truth, life becomes easier. Because the only times we're not telling the truth is when we want to people please other people or we're scared of what they're going to think or we're not doing the right thing. Okay, that's really what it boils down to, right? So let's talk about how you can be more powerful and vigilant today, tonight, and for the rest of your life. The first thing is that awareness is key. When we are aware, we are on point. We are on point. We can be aware. We can be conscious. And we can be vigilant when it comes to our surroundings, when it comes to situations that we find other people in, when it comes to helping others, when it comes to assisting ourselves in a situation, and when it comes to our own personal life. This is not just to deal with violence. This is to deal with every part of your life is about vigilance. It's about stepping up to the plate and knowing that you're not a victim, and go in there and do what you need to do. And it all begins with awareness. We've got to be aware of our surroundings. We've got to be aware of our values. We've got to be aware of our goals. We've got to be aware of our world. And this awareness takes us into the next level. Because when we are aware, we realize that oftentimes we let our minds talk us out of certain belief and direction. Our minds have a have a great ability of spinning things, you know, like we've talked about the spin doctors before, right? They can spin things in a way that we go, oh, yeah, that's that's not weird. That's normal. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to call the cops on that. That's uh, that's normal. I mean, you know, you see people walking around with three guns every day, you know, I mean, it's it's normal. Yeah. No. When we are aware and we're powerful and we're vigilant, we realize that our mind will try to talk us out of making the right call. It's trying to tell a story, and we have to override that. And the way that I found to override that the best is to act quickly when we see something wrong. When you see something that doesn't add up, act as quick as possible, doing the right thing, So have a plan of action in your head. If you see something that doesn't add up, have a plan of action so that you can make the call, you can stop by the authorities, whatever it is for the outside world, and do it then. 
in your own personal life, when you see things and your mind tries to change it, act accordingly. Okay? It's much like the example I gave about the child that's on drugs and the parents don't want to believe it. Even when somebody says, I've seen your children do drugs, it's a bad deal, and they go, no, no, it wasn't my kid. Even when they find the drugs in the kid's room, the kid still says, no, no, these aren't my drugs, this is Tommy's drugs, whatever. See what I'm saying? Like, in your mind, tries to discredit. But you know. You know. You know it's your kid's drugs. Okay? And so what I'm saying is that our mind will try to try to thwart us on things like that. And so stop it. And realize your beliefs. Feel it. When we're aware, we have like the innate feeling. We know when things are right. We can feel when things are off. You know, thirdly, is to realize that we're only as strong as is our weakest link. We're only as strong as is the weakest link, the weakest part of society. So we got to help others. We got to get involved. We can't turn the blind eye. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, and I'm not saying that people that don't have money and that they're weak, but they are in a weak position because they don't have support. Like I was talking about earlier, a group here in town called Vogel Alcove. They help children that are homeless. And there's a large population of homeless children in our country. I know we often think about kids that are going hungry in other countries and don't have a place to live. But it's right here in our country right now. It's not good. And we, we got to do something about it. So we can't turn the blind eye because realize when those kids grow up and if they don't have people like that organization like Vogel Alcove to educate them and to give them a safe place, they grow up scared and angry adults. Do you see what I'm saying? We got to start early. So don't turn the blind eye when you can help somebody. And you know what? I agree. Some of you say, hey, I'm really busy. I got six kids. I got two full-time jobs. Figure out a way to help. And I know that you're doing as best you can. And some of you might have some time on your hands. And also some of us are so engrossed in our own life that we find faults all the time that if we can just get outside of that and give our time and talent and donate resource and our valuable time to these organizations, it might put our life in a better perspective. Number four, you got to make the call. When something's not right, you got to say it. I mean, heck, we're all holding our cell phones all the time. I mean, come on, let's use it for good. When somebody makes a comment that you don't agree with, when it goes against other people's values and it hurts people, stand up. It doesn't do you any good to be quiet and to crouch down. It doesn't do you any good. It was like from Friday, when Bebo come around, I'd be quiet, but when he leave, I'd be talking again. Really? Is that really working for you? Sure the hell not working for me. You got to step up to bullies, because that's how bullies become bullies, is that people are too scared to step up to the plate. Because mostly bullies are scared, and you got to put them in their place. You know what I'm saying? Because I used to be scared too. And and finally, when I spoke up, it's amazing how they just be quiet. And it might take several times, but there's no place for bullies in this world. There's none. There's no place. And the only way they get the hint and they get the message, and for all that matters, really the rehabilitation, because really it's not just a message, it's rehabilitation. Because when you stand up to a bully, you're doing what has to be done. You see what I'm saying? It's like a it's like a therapeutic situation because all of a sudden they're being put in their place. It's kind of like, I love animals, you know what I'm saying? And Buddy is my boy, my buddy. Everybody's seen Buddy on the Facebook videos, you know, all the videos that are on the website, LYTL Fridays, hashtag LYTL Fridays. I love Buddy, and I take care of him, and I'm a very good parent to him. However, he does not run my house. I don't have Buddy in charge. You see what I'm saying? I, I, I take care of him, but also Buddy, you know, listens to me. I've trained Buddy, much like a bully. You can't sit there and let a bully just run around rampant and not do anything about it. You've got to step up to the plate and make the call. You owe it 
to your own self. Because when we don't step up, right, our power diminishes. We feel kind of lesser than, right? Number five, we're no longer the victim. We gave up the victim jersey a long time ago. That jersey is no longer here. It's got no spot here. I'm not even giving that jersey to charity, man. I'm uh, getting rid of that jersey. I'm going to recycle that bad boy. I'm going to recycle that bad boy that nobody gets it. Yeah, we're no longer victims here. Victim is just not taking responsibility for our own life, okay? You're not a victim. You're a superhero. Superheroes are not ever victims. Bad things can happen to good people, but we step up and we keep moving on. Because we're the example We're the good example for other people to learn from. Last but not least, be the superhero that you were born to be. Be the superhero that you were born to be. You owe it to yourself and you owe it to this world to shine, to do what's right, to hold your values close and to be vigilant to protect yourself and the values of others. No more victimhood here, just superheroes. Stay tuned, I got a great show for you next. Check out AshleyBurgess.com. We had a really awesome redo on that website. The content is amazing. Give you something to watch instead of the humdrum shows that are just boring the crap out of us. Be the superhero that you were meant to be. It's time. Pick up the phone. It's The call is here, and it's time for you to make that call back. Live your true life perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. We'll be back this time, and well, you know, three shakes. <laughs> 